Hello and welcome to a guide on killing Raziel the first necromancer. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Raziel is a high level necromancy boss unlocked after the Alpha Omega quest requiring 30,000 souls in the Will of Souls. Now while Raziel isn't a particularly difficult boss mechanically, he does hit like a truck and players that lack damage output will suffer heavily, much like the ambassador boss. Weapon wise, I cannot recommend you do this boss with anything lower than tier 90 weapons. Armor is a different story and you can get away with tier 70 DPS armor, although higher is always better. What's far more important is that you have a necromancy zut cape, the enchanted salve amulet, and good invention perks. I suggest you at least have some kind of form of biting on your armor, an undead slayer perk combination, and relentless to occasionally save adrenaline. I'll be leaving a link to a very useful PVM perks wiki page down below with combinations and component calculators to help you perk up. In your inventory, you're going to want to bring your usual necromancy items such as runes, ectoplasm, potions, and so on. A key item you want to bring is that red potion called a power burst of vitality, as we'll be using that potion to effectively reduce damage by 50% to help us in the final phase. Now you might have noticed that I'm not suggesting any solid foods except for two pieces you're going to be using before the fight starts. Instead, you're going to be using non-solid food that doesn't drain your adrenaline, such as blue or green blubber jellyfish and saradomin brew flasks. Lowering your adrenaline during the Razor fight is deadly and hurts you more than it benefits you. Now this is the case at many bosses, but at Razio it's especially important to be using non-solid foods. You'll also notice this weird necklace called Expensive Spices, as we'll be using that to increase the amount of healing we gain from our blubbers. And, in case you haven't unlocked, using the falling relic power called Blessing of Het to increase health gain from these foods by 10% is incredibly helpful. The other relic powers I used were Death War to reduce incoming damage when your health is lower, and the Conservation of Energy relic power for Death Skulls and Living Death. Finally, I want to talk about using a Blood Reaver familiar here. You're going to be using this familiar to heal you throughout the fight automatically by storing scrolls in it and setting the auto fire function to be using a scroll every 9 seconds or so. Every time you teleport back to War's Retreat after a kill and you use this crystal, it should be healed back up to full health and therefore it will never die, assuming you have the unlock that is. Before even touching Raziel, I suggest you learn the following two bossing techniques in a controlled, less stressful environment. The first is tick eating, which involves key binding the eat food ability and your sourdome and brew flask on two separate key binds. By pressing these two key binds in rapid succession, you can rapidly heal even mid combat. The best way of doing this, in my opinion, is just thinking of it of tap tap, tap tap, tap tap and so on. The second technique is moving and dealing damage at the same time. It might sound daunting at first, but this is one of the most useful things to learn. Go to any combat dummy location, turn off your run, and spam click your mouse to move up and down. Next, simply press your keybound abilities while spam clicking your mouse. Never stop clicking your mouse. Then all you need to do while spam clicking your mouse is to press the keybind of your combat abilities. You'll know you're doing it correctly if your character does not turn towards your target and instead uses the ability while continuing along its path. You can do this with basics, thresholds, and even ultimate abilities. I'm explaining this to you now so you can practice on combat dummies before you're taken by surprise in the fourth phase of the Razio boss fight. Practice this using the walk function and the run function because both work. I suggest keybinding the three main necro basic abilities, including the basic that is used automatically, as it isn't used automatically when moving around. This will allow you to continue to use that basic even when you're moving around. Now, Raziel is a necromancer just like you and will use similar abilities that you possess during the fight. He'll occasionally use Finger of Death, spawns minions, and even knocks off your prayers. It's almost like fighting a real player, except it's a bot. To make reacting to mechanics easier, turn on voiceover sounds in your settings. Now, as Raziel knocks off your prayers, unless you're using the Anticipation of Freedom ability, it's recommended to fight him camping Soul Split, while only switching to protect from necromancy for certain mechanics, like the Volley of Souls attack. This attack will almost always kill you if you're anything below full health without the Protect or Deflect Necromancy prayer turned on. Thankfully, you can see and hear this attack coming. Throughout the fight, Razio will gain souls as indicated by the teal-colored circles above his model. 
Once they're completely filled up, Raziel will shout this is true power. before blasting you to oblivion. Psst. Turn on game sounds for your own good. You can reduce incoming damage before it lands by using Debilitate or Deflect Necromancy and the Devotion ability if you have enough adrenaline, or simply just tank it, but make sure that you are at the very least swapping to the Deflect Necromancy prayer and eating up right after. When Raziel says, Suffer at my hand, he will use the Finger of Death ability to deal a good chunk of damage. You can react to this audio cue by protecting against necromancy, similar to the Volley of Souls mechanic. Although if your damage is good enough, you can also just soul split and steamroll through it. After reaching 700,000 life points, Razio also spawns pillars that increase the amount of souls he gains, but do not worry about these pillars and simply ignore them. Trying to take down the pillars will be a net loss and will extend the fight for much longer than it needs to be, making it far more difficult. The same goes for the minions he spawns throughout the fight. Just ignore them and focus on dealing damage against Raziel. The one thing you can do if there's tons of minions around you and you need some heals is use the Blood Siphon ability to slap Raziel for a 30k while healing yourself to full but it won't be necessary with the right damage output. After reaching 400,000 life points, Raziel will occasionally use the Wall of Ghosts mechanic, indicated by him saying, Join us in death. These ghosts will smack you for a good bit of damage, but can be avoided by walking back a few times as soon as you hear that, join us in death, and then going back. It's a bit tricky to do this without moving Raziel around. You can also use the dive ability to get out of the way. Now, just like a player, Raziel can move around. If you get too close to Raziel, about two tiles between you and Raziel, he will jump around the room, which will cause your abilities like Death Skulls to cancel out, if unlucky. Raziel also occasionally scythes you, which will disable your prayers, not your soul split, for 5 seconds in addition to stunning you for 3 seconds. Use the freedom ability to unstun yourself. Upon reaching 200,000 life points, Raziel will teleport behind the flame wall to attack you with beams of necromancy flames. These flames spawn within short notice of black spots you can see on the floor and do huge damage. Try to avoid these by running around while trying to deal damage with your summoned skeleton warrior using the command ability, the finger of death ability, and your weapon special attack. Summoning the vengeful ghost may also be helpful for extra heals. Personally, what I like to do when Raziel teleports behind the flame walls to eat up, sit my power burst of vitality to double my HP temporarily, and then use the reflect defensive ability, which you're able to use without a shield thanks to the greater bone shield incantation. The limitless ability, if owned, can be useful to get access to these defensives at 15% adrenaline. After reflect ends, you can use the debilitate ability to reduce incoming damage again, but it might be easier to deal damage while tick eating your food and avoiding the pillars instead of keeping an eye on how much adrenaline you have for that defensive. Alternatively, you can go into phase 4 with the anticipation ability, deflect necro turned on, and then use the devotion ability to stand pretty much immune and still for about 10 seconds. Keep an eye on the anticipation ability counting down though, and use freedom before it ends because otherwise Raziel might knock off your prayers and it was all pointless. Now unless your damage is amazing, you're still going to end up running around avoiding those beams of necromancy flames, so get ready to deal some damage while moving around. It goes without saying that after your devotion ends, you're going to swap back to soul split to heal from the damage you deal. Now to give you an even better idea of how to take on Raziel, I'm going to be showing you an uncut kill. It's by no means a perfect rotation, but it works for me and hopefully it will work for you as well. All right, now let's cover a full uncut kill. I start by getting adrenaline in the PVM hub so that I can start my kill with 100%. I then teleport over to the Citadel and start summoning my conjurers losslessly as I'm not in combat. After summoning all three, I extend the duration with the life transfer incantation and immediately eat my solid food to heal back up to full, as solid foods do not drain your adrenaline outside of combat. I rejoin my instant surge and then move forward a single tile. Before Raziel spawns, I try to command my ghost and skeleton to again losslessly use these abilities. I click on Raziel and use the Death Skulls ability, plus I throw a vulnerability bomb straight at the start of the fight. The reason I use Death Skulls first is because I'm about to use the Living Death ability at 100% Adrenaline, which resets Death Skulls cooldown. After using the Living Death ability, make sure you use your Adrenaline Potion and the Split Soul Incantation and then build to your next Death Skulls, which are going to launch straight away. I then drop a Bloat ability, a Finger of Death, 
and eventually a weapon special attack as well. I then build up to another set of Dev Skulls, and what I could probably do in between here is also use the Command Skeleton ability to have that skeleton dealing even more damage, but I didn't. We're about to get the Ghost War mechanic, so we're trying to avoid that by walking around, and then it's back to some more Finger of Death and Bloat Action for DPS. Now, my skeleton is about to die, as you can see, and you're going to want to resummon that skeleton ASAP because it is a big damage dealer. Also, pay attention as Raziel is about to use the Volley of Souls attack, so I swap to the Necromancy Prayer because I do not have enough adrenaline for devotion and I want to save my Limitless ability for the final phase. Okay, at this point, I'm just improvising a bit, eating up a bit, keeping my health high, and then I surge forward once Raziel hits 200,000 life points for the final phase. I use the Power Burst of Vitality and the Reflect ability and start DPSing down. Razio. Since I have a ton of adrenaline, I'm also able to use the Death Skulls ability, but I do need to make sure that I do not move away from Razio too far, as that would cancel out the ability. I also try to use Finger of Death and Volley of Souls to deal a big amount of damage. Now you'll notice me using the Volley of Souls ability at two souls, which is something you don't want to be doing, as you might as well be using it at three souls for more damage every global cooldown. And at 30,000 life points, you'll see Razio get instant kill thanks to the DPS armor set effect, bada beam bada boom, that's Razio Gull. This may not be the most efficient way to kill Razio, but it's been working pretty well for me and I hope it helps you as well. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.